right. Hello, everyone. This is Leslie Powers here with Derek Bartolicelli, and we have another exciting Dissolving the Divide today with our international guest, Dorian Sar Saracen. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much yeah. for having me today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We made it work. You're all the way in Taiwan, Derek in France. Yeah. So, and <laughs> Last time I saw Dorian was actually in France, uh, yeah. 30, 40 kilometers from where I'm living at, uh, right next to Marseille, yeah. right around the way. And you are staying in Taiwan and you got it going on and you're quite the exquisite artist with, you know, dance, painting, uh, creating uh, wonderful soaps and healthcare products and all these things uh, you sh people can check out our website and uh if you want to mention that towards the end but uh yeah uh we are curious as to what your observations has been towards certain uh things around and and all that stuff yeah. and uh and just you brought up some interesting uh topics you wanted to discuss with us so yeah Dorian, tell us a little about yourself and uh yeah well thank you well, Derek it was great to meet you in France we were really neighbors and um it's always good to to meet uh, like-minded people and and make new friends so yes I I'm an artist I'm a dancer and I also paint and make handmade products uh, with plants but dance is my first um, passion, I would say, with uh, drawing. So that's what I, I was just simply doing as a child. So dancing and drawing. I don't know what I was doing more, dance or drawing, but I know that's what I was doing. And dance, I was lucky to go to a dance school. That was just a few minutes walk from my building. And uh, drawing was like taking a random notebook and a pencil like uh, you know the big pencils and that's what I was using I didn't have watercolors or you know any fancy art supplies so I was feeling like 200 pages like uh, mm. like really big notebooks and just drawing 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 and doing some contests at school like if we had a project and I would be so happy to to create, and I, I remember I, I won a, um, a drawing contest at school for our neighborhood. So we had to draw the neighborhood and and do some kind of uh, sensibilization of uh, people uh, like littering the the space, you know, with the dog poop and <laughs> very French, you know. So we had to, you know, draw like the the neighborhood how we would like if it was dirty and yeah. how we would like when it would be clean, when people care about the space. It was interesting. And um, I was one of the winner of the contest and our drawing was um, in every uh, business in the, in the neighborhood. So like the pharmacy, the bakery store, the everywhere. It was very interesting, but really for me, drawing was... Um, was something I will naturally do and without thinking, yeah. And the plants, I always like uh, working with plants, uh, making natural products, but this is also when I, in 2008, when I started to find, uh, you know, toxic ingredients in our cosmetics. So I found a chart with all the, the, harmful ingredients in certain brands and all brands that were testing on animals, etc. So this made me realize, oh, is there a way to find some cosmetics or products that we put on our skin that don't have that much harmful ingredients? And that's how I found some forums at the time with recipes and I started to make my own creams, um, not soaps at the time, soaps came later. I went to take a workshop in Bali in 2018. 
So all the time before it was simply, you know, creams or oils, body oils, simple things. And also to realize, oh, we can just use simple ingredients, like a, a simple oil that doesn't need to even have anything added to it. And we can just use that for the face or for our hair. And that's enough. So we don't need all this uh, harm done to us because it goes through the skin, which is um, absorbing so much uh, ingredients and also the harm done to animals. Yeah. And, and that's how I, uh, then I wanted to share it with people. So as soon as I started to make this for me, I, I started to share it with friends and family. And I, I had some friends who started to do their own. We were sharing uh, like the website we were finding at the time, like forums, like I said, was not on YouTube like now and everywhere. So I was happy to share that with people too. And now uh, I'm like, I saw you put it on the screen, uh, share it on the website that I have, or people can si simply contact me. And yeah, yeah. more holistic options. That's great. Yeah. So it's, it looks like in your life that you followed the path of your like callings, mm -hmm. you know, and love things that you've loved to do and found a way to incorporate that into your day to day life as as a, a grown up. <laughs> it's like... and actually, you said a word, uh, a little sentence that I say often is find a way. Mm -hmm. I'm always on the find a way uh, mindset. <laughs> When I look back at how I did things, even as a child or a teenager or growing up, I always found a way because I had obstacles. It was not, uh, okay, you want to do painting or, okay, go to an art school and here the door is open for you. It was, um, there were obstacles where also I had to, to change uh, my path sometimes because I couldn't study art anymore or, um, and then I still found a way. And I think it's important to remember that you can find a way. There's yeah. always a way and you, you can find it yourself. You can build the path. You know, you don't know what to do. But if you, if you remember what you're supposed to do or your purpose, you can build that path, even if nobody built it before, you know. At school, you always have these little books and booklets where they show you all the, the jobs you could potentially do in the future. And I always find them limited. I could never find, you know, something that would speak to me. And I was like, oh, then if I, if I like dance, that I would have to be in that mold. But I'm not sure if I want to do this. Or if I like art, then oh, I should be an art teacher, you know? So or sometimes I'm like, okay, then I would like to be an art teacher. But it's more like, you're trying to find something from a list. It's not really coming out of you, you know? Yes, great point. And I, that really brings us to kind of declare this umbrella topic that we're, we're going to talk about, which is, which you, you, you um, articulated is, is what we are here to do, you know, our purpose, our calling from within, like you just said, versus what society or our family, our school system, et cetera, you know, programs us to do or pressures and coerces us to do, they, you know, and then when I think it's good to talk about that those are different things, right? And how we navigate through. And my first question though, is like, you meant, you said something about remember your purpose. And I think that that's sometimes uh, with all of the programming, I think a lot of people don't have an idea. They don't know what that is. They don't know how to figure out what their internal calling is. And I'd love to hear more about what your thoughts are on that. Yes, that, that's where you have to remove the layers that have been blinding you from seeing what you're supposed to do. It can be video games. If you grew up with lots of video games, that will blur your vision completely. Mm -hmm. And I've been falling into some video games around 13 years old, and I could mm -hmm. recognize that this was uh, becoming addictive. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it was even when I stopped playing the game, it was always in my mind for years. Anytime I would see, you know, in a, a random video, I would be, 
oh, I miss playing that game. I really want to play. So it was still living in my head and I had to really cut it, uh, go to the root and be like, what is really uh, making me want to play? Because it's always attractive. It always stimulates you. And, mm -hmm. and then that's where it's killing your creativity also. Mm -hmm. So I, I've been, um, when I started to play video games, it's the time I was creating less. So I was still dancing because I had dance classes. Thankfully, I had this outside of school. But I was drawing less, uh, definitely. And when I stopped, I was drawing again because you end up on your desk, you get bored, you grab a pencil, and you start to scribble and do something. And then you're like, OK, uh, let's do something again. And with all different things i'm mentioning video games is just an example it could be a lot of things it could be many other programming but it's just to find what's the program that is blurring your vision and and blurring your 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 like blocking your creativity or or your the vision to see to to see what you you're supposed to do or what you like to do because you might um, like sport or do certain things. I don't know anything, but if you put too much of your energy in, in that program, you might not even see that maybe that sport or that thing is your purpose. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That reminds me, Leslie, did you not just release uh, part eight of your live and thrive <laughs> Yeah. about that? If you wanted to share something that pertains to what you just talked about, right? Yeah. It's so timely really that this yeah. is on my mind a lot. This idea of finding our North star, finding our kind of like the true direction of our soul path and, mm. you know, seeing it as a discovery really that, like you said, is, you kind of have to take back the layers of the things that are blocking us from kind of looking inside and feeling and seeing, you know, what's true about what, what we're here to do. Yeah. And what we love. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll be very interested to, to learn more about your, your research and your work about it. Yeah, it's a, it's a beginning. It's a beginning and I'll, I'll do more. But yeah, I think it's important because like, you know, we're all born unique beings, right? We're completely unique. No one else in, in the whole planet is, is like us, you know, our template, our genetics, everything. And I tend to think, you know, that we're not, it's not random that we're born now and here you know, at this time and that, that the world sort of needs what we have to give. And yet if all we're focused on is what's coming at us from the outside, we're not going to be able to listen to those inner, more subtle intuitions and callings. Yeah. And like you said, you know, turn off the TV, turn off the video game, be bored, you know, uh, yeah. kind of be still, you know, and and right. find those those times and places to listen inside and see what comes out, right? Yeah, it's exactly about listening inside, <laughs> listening uh, and, and finding that voice again. You know, it's here in every one of us. And to simply realize that you, you, you've had a program, uh, like you say, it can be the TV, it can be like, video games it can be school it can be the family parents religion so many things so yeah. many things that are that are you know a voice in the back <laughs> yeah i mean and and like the society tends to discourage um artists or people studying um philosophy you know when i was in in high school the guidance counselor asked me what i wanted to study and i said philosophy and the, very quickly they each said me that i wouldn't get a job what else would i like to do you know and i saw like psychology <laughs> then you know no. but you know it's i even see it with my my daughter where she's kind of discouraged in a way from going in a direction she's naturally interested in for the more pragmatic, where's the job, you know, mm. where are the jobs? And I'm wondering how, what have you faced um, in terms of resistance mm. to your calling and how have you overcome that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, uh, 
um, that's something that I faced uh, very young, I would say, with um, wanting to study art, but not really knowing where and what. I really had no idea. I, I knew that I liked my art class in junior high school, and I wanted to do something with art. But when I was going to high school, there were two main high schools in my hometown. So it's a small hometown. And what I hometown to... is that? Martigue? Martigue. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we visited. <laughs> yeah, so it's very small, you know. You've been there. And, um, and I knew I wanted to go to the high school that had an art class option. So not even a main class, but I wanted to continue art. Um, and my father had a friend who was, um, uh, how is it called, like a principal of a junior high school? So, yeah, director or principal? Yeah. I mean, in French, we say principal. But yeah, anyway, so the person who manages the. Superintendent, the... maybe even. But... Okay, yeah. How do you say it? An attendant, a superintendent? Superintendent, but that could be like an overseer of you know. Mm. Never mind. It, it okay. Really well, <laughs> you understand. It's not so important. Uh, his position, <laughs> his yeah. working position. We, we don't really, uh, uh, you know, respect his authority, anyways. <laughs> yeah. That, that's the thing. It's uh, exactly about authority. So, because my father sees uh, um, authority as something to be followed and so he listened to his friend who is for him knows better because my father is not working in, in the school at this position but his friend is so we should listen to him and he said this high school has less um, uh, su uh, success results than the other high school so my father came back and said no you have to go to that high school and I was like no I want to study art I want to go to this high school it's, and it was very clear that I had, I couldn't choose it. I had mm. to go there. And it was like this. So I couldn't really resist. I tried. And I thought, okay, I go to this high school and I'll find a way. So that's always in the back of my head. You want me to, to go there anyway? Okay, I, it's fine. I'll still find a way. So I went to this high school, which was um, actually very good. And I met some of my best friends now. And I had a great time. But it was more like the options I had to choose were, were more language oriented because I didn't want to study more math or more economics. So I studied what was left and it was not art. So it was languages. So I had to choose a third language, which was Italian because I was already studying English and Spanish. And my only option was to study Italian. <laughs> And it's a beautiful language, but at that time, I didn't want to study Italian, <laughs> you know? So that was like uh, an obstacle I had to navigate through. And eventually, you know, in three years of high school, um, life happens in a certain way. And I, and I ended up um, wanting to study martial arts mm. outside of school. But I think my brother was watching so many Kung Fu movies <laughs> that I was eating one day and thought, I want to study this. So I went to my father and said, I want to study martial arts. I want to, to study Kung Fu. And years ago, I, I came with football. I said, I want to study football. And he said, you know, it's dance or football. And I said, OK, OK, forget about football. It's dance. But this time he said the same thing. You know, it's Kung Fu or dance. And I said, Kung Fu. He said, are you sure you're going to stop the dance school? No more dance classes. I was in that same school since four years old. Mm. And now I'm like 16 years old at the, So the, when mm. this happened. And I said, yeah, yeah, I will stop the dance school. And I go to Kung Fu. So he said, OK, then go. So what I appreciate is still, he let me do it, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not like the art class. But this led me then to, to more, uh, to study more languages because then I wanted to study Chinese language mm. and everything around Chinese civilization or even arts. And this is when um, I started to study this at university. So 
because I went through the languages option, then I still found something I like, which was martial, Chinese martial arts. And because I was already in the language, um, like studying so many languages uh, in high school, that now I started to shift my, my vision to languages. And I was mm -hmm. thinking, okay, I will go through art to art through languages. Mm -hmm. So I think I saw languages as a form of art also. And I was like, okay, well, that's the art that I have in my hands now. I was still studying dance in high school. I didn't stop actually because I had, we had a contemporary dance class. So I knew when my father said, it's Kung Fu or dance, I knew I still had a dance class in my pocket. <laughs> right, right, that's yeah. so good. Right, and then Kung Fu is like an art and it's about movement. And I imagine that you found ways to integrate the Kung Fu movements in artistic dance-like ways, didn't you? And actually I've been doing this unconsciously. Yeah. Every time I've been doing improvisation, uh, there's some movements that really look like martial arts inside, but I don't know I'm doing it when I do it. It's like the, the body, uh, you know, has learned some movements. And when you just improvise, you don't think, you don't try to do something specific. Mm -hmm. So that's what you've learned that comes out. And I will have influence from all the other dance styles I've learned. Mm -hmm. and, and definitely, like you said, Kung Fu is a form of movement, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's part of it. Yeah, but it's, yeah you um, got that fluid style. I've, I've noticed it, and anyone listen out, uh, listening right now, sorry, uh, check out Dorian. Did you change your name? Or yes, you yeah, I had to change. Uh, yeah. Well, I had to, it's not Dorian I chose Green anymore, but uh, no. Yeah, but yeah, you got some really awesome uh, dance styles and videos and clips um, incorporating music uh, you have some really mm -hmm. cool backgrounds involved and like the cinematography is great uh your partner line does a great job much love to him but yeah thank you yeah yeah so uh, i changed the name uh and then i had to change again to something that can be shorter so at first i put back like my real last name and uh, dance art but it was too long and I couldn't even have like a username it was not mm -hmm. working so then I made it to Dorian dance art mm. so then it's um, easier yeah but yeah so what I just want to share here by saying this experience is that you find a way like I want to add something is that when I got my my degree at university uh, well I, first of all I went to study because I wanted to study this. I, didn't, I was not thinking about a job. So I was like, okay, I want to study this language and things around it. And I study research. So it's something like, if you don't do a PhD after your master's degree, you, basically there's no job. <laughs> and, but I liked to study this because it was very free. And I was able to study my topic, to write about, like, to write what I wanted to write. I had teachers to, supervised but like nobody changed my text or it was very very free actually so that's why I'm I, I like to mention these studies uh, because it was interesting to study it was not trying to brainwash you into like do this like this and uh, be in the box and it was quite free and when I got my degree uh, one day I read it again and I saw the word art in the main title, like uh, master of uh, like language, civilization and arts. I, I don't remember exactly how it's written, but there was the word art. And I was like, oh, I did it. I, I did something with art, actually. I couldn't study the art class in junior high, uh, in high school. And I didn't go to an art school like uh, for painting or dance or, but actually, yes, I did study art. So I was like, yeah, you see, you can always find a way. Even <laughs> if, if uh, you get pushed here or there, you make your own path and you find a way to, to still do it. Yeah, that's <laughs> anyway, great. Not, yeah, I mean, a degree is not important in itself. Uh, I'm not saying that we should study uh, and get a degree. It's not that at all. But for me to read art on that paper that where I spent 
uh, my time and energy and, yeah. and where I really wanted to study art, it was the, like, well, yeah, if you want it, you can have it or you yeah. can create it. That's what I mean. Yeah. Create, yeah. It's validating. And, uh, you know, there's like in your story, a lot of demonstration of persistence and determination and independent thinking, you know, not really taking no for an answer, but also not being like blatantly defiant. You were, you know, smart and you were fle somewhat flexible, but you just kept persisting on that path, knowing what you were seeking. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's what I was telling myself also, like, okay, I'll move this way, like be flexible, like you said, be flexible. I, I'll, I find my way through it. And uh, of course, I was not in something totally different than what I really wanted. So I still was able to choose uh, to study language because I could have mm -hmm. chose economics or mathematics or mm -hmm. I chose what I liked. It was mm -hmm. not my first choice, but still it was something that I really enjoyed. I yes. really like languages, so, and, um, Ooh. yeah, uh, I wanted to say too? something else. Uh, I forgot. <laughs> we'll come back. <laughs> yeah, if you want to think about that, I'm going to mention some things because that could bring up, bring us to a, a headway where a lot of people feel like, all right, so is life predetermined in, in some kind of way? You know, you mentioned how like things are programmed and yada, yada, and yeah, even speaking with my girlfriend here in France, you know, like she's got three kids and she's wondering how they're going to navigate this reality and earn a salary without having to deal with uh, going to university, possibly. But yes, in France, it seems like, yeah, you got to have that university to get a solid job and this, that, even though you can get jobs in whatever thing, but it's just seen as like, you know, lower tier income, whatever. And who cares, right? But uh, what I wanted to bring up, and this is kind of like falls under this umbrella. Ooh, look at my back. <laughs> but uh, yeah, around the circle, you could even consider like the Ouroboros in, in, in the fact that it's been distorted or inverted, perverted of, you know, people are spinning in cycles, call it the rat race or whatever, or a broken record. And uh, in regards to the dance of life and people marching to the rhythm of their own heartbeat, unfortunately, they're a little off beats because they're not properly aligned because they've been swayed this way or that way through social conditioning, you know, generational whatever, upbringing and yada yada being pulled from whatever. And, and these days it's unbelievable of, you know, all the social media and yada yada. So for someone to really, you know, get back into their own like dance of life and go through that trance and dance, you know, the transcendence of all that shit, right? It's a tough task to tackle, but uh, I'm sure you can help folks navigate and break those shackles. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's what I wanted to say earlier and that I forgot. It's when you, when you, have to remember what you're supposed to do or when you have to do it one thing that is important is you cannot care about what people or society will think or say because this will cover um i mean this will hide your purpose you will hide it to yourself when you're focused on what society wants you to do yeah. what they allow you to do or what uh, they make what you were saying, like they, they, they discourage you and uh, financially or uh, with so many levels, like you talked about social media, it's part of the distraction also. It's distraction to remove you from that purpose. Uh, and when you start to care about this, about what people will think if I'm just an artist or whatever I want to do, but it's not something people see as a success in society, you know, or what people will think of me if I if I do it. What, how much money will I get? Because money cannot be your motive, cannot be your motivation. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's first it's the things you want to do. 
So there will be many things, or we can call them obstacles, or can be what people think, can be money, can be the rewards you have from society. And this cannot be the thing you put first. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. This will not allow you to, to fulfill that, that task you have to do, not task, but that purpose. Yeah. So first, first, I would say it's very important to get rid of this because uh, in all the programs we have, we have some, uh, like if you just go to public school, or they will teach you or train you to um, look at what others are doing and, and you will be scared of what they think of you and, and you'll be punished if you don't follow the... The, what everybody else is doing so then it creates so much fear when grade. you grow up mm -hmm. sorry <laughs> or if you get a bad grade you know like the fear yeah. uh, mongering whatever in a sense of yes impending fear of failure your of grades yeah pressure yeah. and yeah measurement yeah and grades are what are what are they they are grades that people say that like this will be what you have to attain but doesn't mean that if you do something else it deserves a zero you know right it's also but you will think like oh if i don't do this thing then i'm not succeeding and and to it's like another layer to get rid of is what people think and what society think how they see you is you have to to be strong in uh, how you see yourself and that's yeah. enough as long as you do what is good and correct and moral mm -hmm. you're not harming any anybody but you yeah. you're strong in, in into knowing who you are and uh, if it has mm -hmm. to be uh, defining what you want to do mm -hmm. you you stay strong and you get you stay grounded in this uh, decision of what you decide what you want to do and no matter what people think because they, it will be like winds trying to push you here and uh, distract you here and social media and this and what they say and and uh, how you look in front of your family or or your friends or, or society in general and th there's no there's nothing wrong with what you're with your purpose I, like I yeah. say again as long as it's not harming anybody yeah do you have any tips or advice to help people with that difficult like um task you just set you just described because i think that's one of the hardest things is that people be are afraid to be authentic and to go against the grain of society and um are filled with doubt or fear of, of being harassed you know hassled or teased or Whatever it might yeah. be. And um, you know, you have to realize who will be that person in front of you doing that and why they're doing it. And, and there's no reason uh, that can interfere with your right action, whether it's mm -hmm. in a form of art and your purpose. You need to understand that this, the person, um, Maybe they're hurt. Maybe they're just mean. Maybe they're they're not in a good place in their life to to want to, to stop someone from doing what they're supposed to do, or to laugh at them, or to tease, or to harass. Or it's always come coming from uh, their own problems or their own traumas. Or uh, do you want to carry this on you and stop doing what you're here to do because they they are. They are not dealing with their own issues, you know, and you cannot deal with those issues. So if you understand this, uh, you also understand that you have your own issues to deal with that you can only deal with. And then that's what is that's what's important to focus on. And there's um, as long as you know they don't cross the line, then you then you will have to do something. But mm -hmm. if it's like no is in the back, let it be. It will. Uh, people will find it's sad actually but because they're they're they are harming others because they're not dealing with their their harm their, yeah. their own the own things that hurt them 
in the past or even still now. But at some point, you have to re realize the responsibility. Who is that responsibility? And if you start to take your responsibility to, to, to deal with that issue that you cannot really fix unless they really want help from you, uh, then you will not spend time doing what you're here to do. And yeah. that's a shame. And we need people to do. And maybe these people who are harassing or laughing or criticizing, maybe then they will see that they can do that too, actually, you know? Yeah. Because they're here to do this as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, to find their purpose. Yeah. So the more you, you stay strong, then you become a, a model of a person who's strong, who, you know, can inspire others, right? Who's, yeah. If your work can inspire other people, it's wonderful. It's yeah. because you want other people to also live that, uh, live their purpose and, and, mm -hmm. and do what they love and use that to, because you have to look at the situation in the world, in the world, sorry. If that purpose can be used to do God's work, you know, or to do the great work or to do, to, to take that and make it devotion to truth. And mm -hmm. that's, I would say that's what we're supposed to do. You yeah. know, eventually. So if it helps people or other beings, or if it's good for people, then um, do it. And if you can turn it into something, like I, I just said, uh, look at the situation of the world and what it needs. And today, unfortunately, it needs uh, more. I would say if you look at it as a fight, you know, you, you need more weapon and you can use that as a weapon to defend yourself and help others to find their weapon and to, they can, so they can defend themselves as well. Yeah. Your um, dance videos are quite deep, right? It's, it's not just dance techniques, but you're really creating a message through your dance and they're very artistic and um, I, and there's a, you clearly have exposure to esoteric, you know, esoteric knowledge and natural law and some Freemasonic themes are woven through. So I'm really curious how you came upon all of that. Yes. Yeah, so um, first I was just dancing because I, I went to a dan uh, dance class and I like to just dance by myself in my bedroom after dance class and create some stories and mm -hmm. I will play some songs that I would have like I, at the time I had a, a small um, cassette like a, a small how is it called again uh, for music you know you put it yeah in a cassette tape a yeah <laughs> even. so I will have this with uh, all kinds of Christmas songs mm -hmm. so, <laughs> And I will, I will make a, a dance piece on each song. Like, oh. so I really enjoy to to create alone in my room. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I was not really uh, enjoying the performance in front of uh, people. I like to perform in just with the music to mm -hmm. nobody. <laughs> but um, anyway, then. Dance became just, uh, you know, you learn a dance style and then you perform that dance style, whether it's mm -hmm. ballet or, or if it's a cultural dance, like Tahitian dance, or you, mm -hmm. you, it has rules, you know. And in contemporary dance, I really found a, a freedom because the way I've learned it was based on improvisation. Mm. And I realized, well, improvisation, you can do whatever you want. There's no... Uh, I like dances where there's some codes, you know, but I also enjoy where you can uh, dance, where you can create uh, mm -hmm. what's coming out of you. And like you say, we are unique. So mm -hmm. then our movements are unique. And yeah. then I, um, anyway, I will make it, I will uh, make it shorter. But when I came to Taiwan, um, I started, I came here for my studies. Then I started to teach French. And at the same time, I was dancing on the side and performing. 
But for me, it was very limited because it's just a choreo, someone teaches you, and then you perform it, and then you're done. And there's no creative, really. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. it's creative, but mm -hmm. um, it stays into not a box, but you know, if it's that dance style, then it's that music, it's that choreo, it's these steps. And the more I was doing those shows, the more I felt like I want to have a platform where I can share my dance style. And I cannot really do it here. Uh, I mean, there's not a demand for that. So I thought I'm not going to wait for someone to ask me to perform my style for them. So again, I will find a way find and a I will way. put my videos on YouTube mm -hmm. or online. So YouTube yeah. just became a platform for me or a library or an art gallery. You know, that's what I, yeah. I was seeing it like. And the more I started to find about natural law on the side, starting to find about this uh, esoteric knowledge and I start to feel like I had to merge it. I had to um, express this knowledge through dance, through movement. And mm -hmm. this is how I, I started to, to make videos uh, mm -hmm. like what I do now, where I will spread a message or I will spread some knowledge and it will be in a way that has no uh, spoken language, but the, the movement is the language I'm using to, to spread the message because I found that also this message is very important because it frees yourself. It, it's a key to, to freedom. And I found that so important. That's why I mentioned earlier the situation right now. You have to look at what's the situation of humanity, what people yeah. need. And I thought they need, uh, we all need freedom. We need that knowledge to get to freedom. So how, what do I have in my hands? that I can use to spread that knowledge. And because I was doing my dance videos, I naturally started to, to blend the two and, and, and use my tool, which is dance or drawing, painting, to spread that knowledge. So people then have a choice if you want to, to take, in it, take in that knowledge and, and this weapon to, to express yourself as well, because if, if it can inspire you to express yourself, it's, it's the best that can happen. You know, it's not just for people to sit and watch and it's not entertainment. It's hopefully inspiration for people to create and also inspiration for people to then go find that knowledge to, to dig more because I'm, I'm sharing it in a way that, uh, I cannot share the full thing in, in one little video. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's very, um, very thoughtful, you know, everything that you do in those videos. Thank you. you know, yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it's um, like I've, I've had times where I was very motivated and very inspired and, and sometimes where I didn't really want to do it, but I still pushed through and, and I was like, no, I have to put this out there. So it doesn't, it's not about my feelings, how I feel today and what I'm going to create is I have to do it. So I'll find the time I'll find, uh, it might not be the, maybe this year I'm not feeling the, the, the best, uh, in, in my creativity, but I need to create because of our times today and because this needs to be out there and it's and it's not uh it's not pushed into people it's, it's here for you to watch if you want and it's here for you to to get inspired from it if you want you have a choice you know it, it's not another program or or brainwashing is you have a you have a choice to to go through this content and and see what you want to learn from it. Right, to be curious, really, like yeah. a, port a portal to enter and to be, to find out more. Yes, and also uh, to, you know, not be, because it's so easy with all the programs we have to get stuck into 
what we think something could be. So like the Freemasonry uh, the knowledge, uh, we hear some things or of course it's not, there's some ways that things are done that are not, uh, we might not agree with, but you have to look at the thing from the source. What is it exactly? It's, you know, it's philosophy to help you understand natural law or it's not what people have done with it. Um, so for everything, you have to go back to the root. It's the same with religion. What's the first spiritual message of it? Not what people have done with it. And then mm -hmm. they use it as a program or a way to, to, to brainwash people. To control the masses. Control, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm curious. So let's say a 15 minute um, video. How many hours of time does it take oh. to, to do that together? Yeah, it, it takes months uh, because first I have to, to see in my head, <laughs> like I will sit and and there will be a moment where, because first I will think about the theme first. So, okay, this theme, this topic, this subject, mm, okay. And then I will have a moment. I'd never know when it happens, but I will be here sitting, can be on my couch or in a metro, <laughs> in the subway or, or walking outside. And I will see the video, like uh, the film in my head. Like I will see everything. Uh, I don't know if I'm really aware of what's around me in that time, but I see the, I have the music, especially if I listen to the music at the mm. same time, it gets even more vivid. Mm. But, right. but sometimes even I'm, if I'm not listening to music, I will really see kind of mostly the whole video or the whole thing in my head. And then I will write it down. So when this happens, if I have a, a notebook next to me, it's best because I can just write everything and I have like pages, I just write, write, write the whole scenario and, and all my ideas. And then I will take some out. I will add more in the future. I mean, in the coming weeks. So it takes usually a few months to from the moment it's in my head, or in my mind, then it's on paper. Then I start to practice at home mm -hmm. and I listen to the music. If, if the music is my inspiration, then I will listen to it more and more and more. And if uh, the music is not my inspiration, I will just visualize uh, things about the topic. I don't, I don't know how to explain it, yeah. but yeah. And then practice in the studio. I would rent a studio uh, to practice. And then there's a time to film. So that takes a long time as well. Uh, so time to film takes a few days, usually. Uh, and then the editing part is the longest. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, not as long as the dance, maybe. I don't really know, but it's still mm -hmm. very long. Very long, yeah. Yeah. Definitely longer than the filming. <laughs> yeah, well, you're out in nature a lot of the time and getting beautiful mm -hmm. scenery and lighting. Yeah. And there's a lot that goes into that. So we have to drive. Uh, because I live in the city, actually. Mm -hmm. The thing with, uh, so I live in Taipei, the thing good about Taipei is that it's surrounded by mountains. Mm -hmm. So you're never too far from mountains or nature. And uh, yeah, so it never takes too long to drive and to be near a river or to be in the bush, <laughs> yeah. in nature, yeah. Beautiful. But still, uh, and sometimes I film in the city, mm -hmm. in the, uh, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, so you had to learn a lot of other skills too, like video editing and you yeah. know other things that go along with this creation. Derek knows a lot about that, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it can be draining as well. Uh, you have to really balance because you can spend so long. And the thing about editing, you will spend hours in a row. Like I will mm -hmm. stop editing sometimes at seven a.m. and I started the day before in the afternoon mm. and I'll be wow. like, whoa, uh, it's, my head needs a, like, my eyes need a break. My mind needs a break. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. I can go a little next time confused. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. So to really back in, um, 
I'm sure just like any person out there putting stuff on YouTube or, or wherever, right? They're going to receive some criticisms and yada, yada. <clears throat> uh, and going back to what you're talking about as far as like dealing with criticism and like just, okay, like we can be open to like wanting to improve and hearing people out, but at the same time, still staying within that I am in the fact that we know ourselves better than anyone else. Right, mm -hmm. guys? <laughs> yeah, that's important. Yeah, yeah so um, as far as like any kind of divisiveness you've noticed uh, regarding your whole path work and putting out videos and stuff, have you come across resistance? Uh, any like criticisms? Any, yeah. yeah, I guess that kind of stuff. <clears throat> And then I got a follow-up um, question to that too. Uh, yeah. Well, the thing of, let me think. I don't pay attention to it. Uh, I've yeah. seen so much good comments and good feedbacks that actually I have, I have received more of this. Uh, I don't think really I've received uh, criticism about my dance uh, work um when i have people who will like try to challenge uh or or you know just bring contradictions or i mean it's good when it opens a discussion but when it's just you know uh not really bringing anything it's mostly when i share uh knowledge about natural law and things like that on the, with the, with spoken words on my other channel uh but even like mostly like the the when people uh come at me and be like uh oh i disagree with this it's not true and it's usually when when i share things that are not related to dance but uh with truth or or some things uh about common sense or where people are free to reflect on it, but sometimes people just come very close-minded. Uh, but through my dance work, I haven't really received um, this kind of confrontation, I will say, or criticism, or or maybe I did, but I, honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> and yeah, uh, and and my my channel is not very popular also i guess this happens more when when it grows uh, not necessary actually because my other channel where i share natural law is has less people on it so you see i, I don't know um but just criticism about my dance videos sometimes yes about the filming i've had yeah now i remember about the filming some people told me oh you should buy a stabilizer or yeah, but maybe I film this way because I wanted to, you know, I want to have this effect. Maybe not an effect of, you know, all these dance videos now, they're like uh, the same way, I would say. And, and But my work is not um, just, uh, it's not a dance video to entertain you and, and please your eyes. So I'm not saying this is bad. This is looking great and it's looking awesome. And of course, I would love to have a stabilizer and, and do some work with it. But maybe I don't have one because it's a bit expensive or there are other reasons, you know. But sometimes people will tell you, oh, you should do that and you should do it like this and this way. And well, you know, the, you could ask maybe first, why is it done this way? Because there's a reason. <laughs> yeah. And so also sometimes that's, that's a logical fallacy. You know, they're not really understanding the message or what you're trying to portray. They're just looking at the aesthetics of it and like, oh, getting nitpicky about it. And like, yeah. you know, what was their, that was their takeaway. That was like the only thing they had to say about watching your video. Like they must've been so inspired or what, you know what I mean? So yeah, it, it's that, people have that lens to see things through, unfortunately. So yeah, you just kind of got to, but it does open up a conversation, if you will, to be like, oh, well, well, what did you think about what I was trying to talk to you about? Did you learn anything? Other than that, you know, this person does videos differently than what they like or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and 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 for example, the thing about uh, 
the filming equipment that came, uh, I think, twice from two different people or more. I don't remember. And I just had to brush it away because I was like, well, people are never asking me why don't I use a stabilizer, you know? And then I could answer them. Well, I checked. I went to a store, which is true. I went to a filming store. I checked and it was too expensive. So if you want to contribute to, to, you know, participate and help me get a stabilizer, I'll be very happy. But also, anyway, it's not really what I'm looking for. Uh, it's not the most important part of the of what I create. Uh, it's, of course, I never, I will never refuse uh, a tool that can help me bring more quality to my work. But maybe if I don't have it right now, I think people should ask first before telling you how you should do certain things. You know, that's a good um, point. Yeah. And the other way to look at it is like, it's that can that I'm going to find a way to get my vision across, even if I don't have all the best technical tools, right? Because if you're going to wait yeah. around to yeah. get X, Y, Z to be able to do it, you're not going to get it done. You'll you know? never start. You'll yeah. never start because uh, actually when I decided to create more dense videos, it mm -hmm. was, I think, 2019. Oh, yeah, 2018, I decided, okay, in 2019, I will create one video per week because I didn't have the environment here in Taiwan to, to share my, my creativity and my dance work. And even when I ended up in some dance jobs, I've tried to, to bring quality because there's certain things, how it's done here where in the foreigners industry, I would say with dance, where I found so many things that were wrong and I tried to bring some insight and some options. Like I offered my services to make it better, you know, make it more respectful to the dance style we're doing. Or And people, agents just told me, you don't understand. We're not trying to do art here. So I was like, well, then don't do dance, you know, <laughs> don't use dance to make money then because dance is art, you know. So anyway, um, but yeah, I lost my, I lost what I wanted to say. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I forgot. It's all good. So uh, yeah. we're getting into the second hour of this conversation and uh, what's good with them solution? In regards to uh, like, so what are we talking about? What are we going to be entitling this video? I don't even know. <laughs> We're exploring the mind of Dorian Greens, and it's a beautiful <laughs> scene. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so my my second question in regards to you know your experience in, in the dance scene, right? <laughs> uh, how have you noticed how it's kind of been used? in not the best ways or, and I'm sure there's uh, like a hierarchy in certain dance teams or even like teaching, it, it can be really whatever. <clears throat> but uh, as far as like the psychology behind why certain people go and become dancers and stuff, have you noticed that some are just like seeking that extra attention because they might not have the shadow work to kind of get over the fact they lacked it growing up type of thing yeah definitely um, they get exploited sometimes because they'll do whatever to get that attention in a sense yes yeah and you have some yeah. dance styles that uh people use for that reason could be for personal uh reasons sometimes selfish as well because some people actually will use dance uh, will do dance just for money or uh, just for fame or you know and sometimes you you can see that it's just used like you say for this need of attention and um, this lack uh, from you can take it back to to childhood or Everybody has a different story, but you can see that there's many, I would say, like selfish reasons uh, 
for some people, not all of artists or dancers, but some people, um, uh, it's more like trying to fill a void, you know, and trying to uh, fix something that, you know, that you need to work on, but you don't, you're not really aware of it. So then you, you, you find this dance or, and you use it to just not think about it also. And there could be many, many reasons. Yeah. You know, what I admire about what you're doing here is you've really stepped outside of the box, right? You're mm -hmm. not, you're not staying in a mold that someone else has created mm -hmm. and said, this is how dance is supposed to be. This is, you know, the way an artist mm -hmm. is supposed to get their notoriety, you know, and pay a bunch of money to get your show. You know, or what, I've ta talked to some artists in the Bay Area and it's like really cutthroat and, and expensive to get mm -hmm. your art even seen and it's competitive to get your yeah. art in a show and mm -hmm. very intimidating and it, it takes away a lot of the authentic reasons that people often do art or dance and uh, but I see both you know art and dance as an art is a very therapeutic thing and a way of mm -hmm. you know kind of expressing oneself and very beneficial to emotional um management you know expressing emotion people have blocks a lot of the time in you know with their emotions and art is like a beautiful forum to work through that stuff do you, have you noticed that do you have any comments on that process yeah i think uh for me dance is um is a step closer to freedom mm. it's uh, i might not we might not get all like full freedom in for all human beings right now but dance is one step or oh, this is i would say this is a space where i experience freedom yeah as a child already like i said i was dancing on those christmas songs and uh, mm -hmm. um, i mean then if you talk about religion it can be interesting because uh, on my mother's side the family is muslim and on my father's side is christian but i had this christmas song in my mom's house and it was no problem. It was not even here for me to get any religious uh, ideas, you know. It was just beautifully sung. And uh, so I was listening to this, like, uh, uh, just enjoying the melody and being feeling free, you know, to do whatever I wanted on, on this melody that I liked. And that's where I really experienced, uh, yeah, freedom through dance when I could express myself uh, without thinking, because uh, at any age, if you're alone in a, in a room and you play music, you will dance freely. There won't be a teacher to correct you and, and there's no uh, rules. Again, I'm not against rules in dance because it's not really rules, it's codes of mm -hmm. certain styles, but then can you can have a, sorry. I was just thinking about it's like a communication that can unify people, right? Yes. In, in you know, because yeah. you dance the salsa really well, by the way. Oh, no, wow. Not <laughs> moderately. I'm not a dancer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, you, you experience freedom with movement, with dance, when you really do it without thinking of how it's going to look, who is going to watch, because again, that's why it's important to not uh, focus on what people think because you, you see it just in dance. When you dance thinking about what people will think of how you dance, you don't really dance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you, 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 you don't leave the art fully. <laughs> yeah. So performance so, is a whole nother thing where, cause you have to deal with like, you know, performance anxiety and mm. other things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will, uh, even if I was performing on stage from five years old, every year for our gala, I would be nervous to go on stage. But what helped mm -hmm. me is that we will have the light on us and the crowd will mm. be dark. So mm. I could never see the crowd really. So I would be focused on my choreography and, mm -hmm. and enjoying 
close to how I felt when I was dancing in my room, you know? Mm -hmm. you, you don't really see what's around you and you focus because you have to remember what you're doing. So you don't really pay attention to who's watching. But then when, uh, so later on, I started to dance like for work and have some different kind of events where sometimes the crowd is just like a few people at your feet. They're in front of you or you're not even on a stage. So you start to you see people in their eyes, you know, and it can distract you. <laughs> yes. yes. And, but if you have, and it depends because the crowd will be very different. So I've danced also in a theme park here in Taiwan. And it was, uh, it's actually an Aboriginal theme park because Taiwan has Aboriginal people. So they mm. also call them indigenous people before Chinese people came. And there's a park, well, I mean, this also can be controversial, but uh, you will find some groups dancing. What is good is that they only hire Aboriginal people to perform their traditional dances. So you can still see something mm -hmm. uh, close to the authentic dance, even if it's just a show, you know, like uh, yeah. there's no, they're not really performing a ritual or something. Anyway, that's another topic. But um, then in this kind of shows where you have to perform yeah. five to six times a day. So I was performing uh, flamenco for like, a, for example, two months and you perform every day. Mm -hmm. And and then you have a different crowd in front of you, in front of you. Some people that just watch without watching you you wonder if they're really watching what's going on some people that are watching with like uh stars in their eyes they're, they're so excited and you but you see the people because it's daytime and mm -hmm. then it can give you energy also and you start to to because when you perform six times a day the same choreos you get bored of it and you get mm -hmm. tired of it so it's hard to to keep the same energy level every day you know and sometimes there's even nobody you, you still have to perform and there's no audience <laughs> so <Right>. you know, <laughs> when you have an excited audience then you will your dance will come out Ooh. even more and and uh, and you'll share you start to build a connection also with the audience so you yeah you'll share more with them and uh, it's like even just a comment on that. It's like even being on path with your vision, with your calling, it's not always smooth. It's not always, you know, the funnest, right? So there's like a quality of um, perseverance and staying true to a vision here. Even if when you're back here, it's like, oh, do I really want to do this? You know? Mm. So how, how do you motivate yourself? Um, well, in the dance work, I would say, I've been refusing a lot of dance opportunities because it didn't align with my values and what I think I should respect in dance. So I've had no problem saying no because I don't, I mean, I don't do, uh, money is not my main motivation. If dance can help me get the money I need like everybody, I'll be, uh, that's what I do it as a job, but I will never want money to dictate my, to choose, you know, to be the, the main uh, thing that, yeah, that, di that, that dictates my, what I do with dance. Right. So when what I'm asked to do doesn't align with uh, my dance values or my values in life, I will not do it. And I will refuse a job for that reason. And I think actually if more people will do that, uh, we will help also the dance industry. Like it might be different for any countries, different from your area, from here, my area. And, and again, here's like there's a foreigners dance industry that exists, which is different than the Taiwanese dance industry different levels, different problems. Um, so money is not what motivates me. I can refuse dance jobs, no problem, even if I have nothing 
in my pocket, you know. And then on the artistic dance side, uh, yeah, dance side of my dance videos, I've been very inspired all the time. Very, very inspired. I will like, uh, it will never stop. Like I will always have a list of videos I need to do and more and more. And even when I was saying I was doing my dance videos for every week for a year, uh, some days I film my video the same day I was supposed to upload it. But I will always find an idea and something I wanted to express. But then last year, so some things happened where I had to take another job. I just stayed there for two months, but more like marketing related. And I couldn't dance as much as I wanted. I couldn't create uh, as much uh, as I wanted. I still tried to do, I still did it actually, but I could feel like as if my creativity was uh, pressed down, was almost suppressed. And I was a bit worried because it lasted for a year. Yeah. So one year, so it's now. I'm getting back to, to finding my original imagination, I would say, and inspiration. It's almost like if, if uh, it was a bit hijacked, I haven't been too careful, and I let it get uh, attacked, affected, and now I know how to protect it. And still, I created, uh, like I, I focus on the dance film for the Seed 5 conference, and I was like, I have to do this uh, even. And, and I was usually the imagination, the, the creativity, the ideas, they come like very, like I said, I will see everything and I will be very uh, motivated by it. Yeah, that's the conference layer. And it will nourish the, the cycle, you know, like you get motivated because of, of the ideas. It's the, it's actually the topic that motivates me. So you see like metamorphosis, I was like, that's oh, so inspiring, or the music or this, or there's always something that creates this motivation and this inspiration. And then I get uh, very creative with it and I, I want to do, I want to do it. But last year, I couldn't find that um, light, you know? It feels like uh, the, the, the flame was, uh, I don't know, something happened. And I know from different things, different things happened outside that affected it. You got off beat, off rhythm. You were in such a good flow. Yes, you had to exactly. And all that stuff. And that's kind of what I was talking about earlier. Like people are just off beat of what they want to do, but have to, you know, kind of compromise certain things to pay the mm -hmm. bill, all that stuff. Yeah. And it's hard to get back into whatever flow Okay. all the ebbs and stuff of yeah like trying to create yeah. and have that free form expression and the free time to you know explore the i magi nation within yourself yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and free time that the thing is when i i was doing my videos every week i mean i was doing so much and i will find the time that's the thing because i had the 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 flame was super big you know i was really uh there was this light was really bright inside of me. And I know then that it's not, it cannot be controlled from outside it's because you take care of your light. Yeah. So I didn't take care of it. I didn't pay attention and I, I didn't take care of my light. And then I still created. But the thing is, when I created, for example, the, the video for the dance film for, uh, the seed conference. I didn't really like it. I didn't really. I was was like, yeah, okay. I, I'm 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 putting all my efforts. That's the thing. I know I have to do it well, or I have to. I cannot just do it halfway. So I put all my my efforts and my focus and my energy and also the time. I forgot to mention when I created dance film is the time of research. It's also a long time. That's part of it, mm -hmm. and. Um, so I was still focused, putting all my energy, but I was feeling a bit, a bit sad about certain things or like the sad to not feel this light, the power of this creative light as I used to feel. So I was like, okay, I will come back. We'll come back one day, but I couldn't force it. I couldn't 
it's not something you create, you build. It's something you cultivate and you protect. And I didn't protect it enough. Uh, I, I cultivated it for years, but then I let it be affected with, uh, by outside situations. So, yeah, it took me a year to find this back. So then once you realize things, then you can take actions to to not let them happen again. So here, if I realize that I had to protect this better, then I know I have to protect it better <laughs> in the future. So what did you and learn from them. that? Yeah. To, what, did you, what, were you lear- what were your lessons from that in terms of tips to help other people take care of their light and maintain it? The thing that I'm happy about is that I didn't stop. Mm-hmm. I slowed down, but I didn't stop. So mm-hmm. yes, I created less content, or, but I didn't stop learning. I didn't stop creating as well. But the thing I created, I couldn't, be, I couldn't be focused on too many things as I could do before. I had to do just one thing well, and it's okay. It's just one thing. Maybe in the moment I didn't like it, but now when I look at it, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, it's actually, like the other day I was telling my husband, Oh, it's not that bad actually you know <laughs> it's i it's not that bad and he was like yeah it's actually great and i'm like it's also hard to be very uh objective with your own work because you can see where you could have done it um not better but yeah like more uh, improve this or but then i just looked at it objectively and thought oh that's actually good so i shouldn't be too hard on on my work and and what I create, and I'm glad that I did it, I worked on it, I shared it, I didn't, like, uh, my advice would be, like, don't close yourself into um, a bubble where you end up uh, not creating anymore, you know, create, even if it's something small, or even if it's one big piece that takes you a whole year, but just keep creating, even when you you don't feel like it, don't don't force you to. Um, what I mean is is don't keep a balance. Mm-hmm. Don't force you to to do something you don't want to do. Really, like if you feel like I don't want to do this, don't force yourself. But if you know that's what you want to do, if it's whatever form of art or anything, if I know it's dance. I cannot feel like I'm forcing myself to do it. I still want to do it. Actually, I want, I was saying, I want this light again. I want to feel this again, like, uh, and be like, like before, like, ta, 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 like, you know, really uh, create, create. And I just realized I need to slow down. So if you need to slow down, my advice would be slow down. Don't mm-hmm. stop. Trust some of the natural rhythms of our creative process too, because I think yeah. it's not realistic to, to think we're always going to be at the same intensity and productivity yeah. all the time. You know, different things happen in our lives and where we may have ebbs and flows, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You, things will happen and sometimes it will be obstacles or distractions to take you out of this path or to take you away from what is important for you to do. But you have to realize the patterns of distractions and obstacles and then don't fall in the trap. So I recognized the trap. I could see it clearly. I knew what was happening. And I I just told myself, okay, it's a time like this, (laughs) but it doesn't mean it's going to destroy it. Yes. You know, it, it's still here. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. and, you... awesome. um, and for you, it, it's going to be, yeah, it was more evident than others because you have identified and have lived your passion for years. But there's a lot of other people that haven't had that spark of passion. They haven't found that with, within themselves mm. or, or that, you know, life path, like Leslie talks about with the North Star, if you will, mm-hmm. and all these yeah. things. So, and that can, can just, you know, divide themselves, you know, upon themselves because they're not living their true authentic lives and they're going to be having these, you know, 
inner contradictions be scratching yeah. and itching at them, you know, every now and then throughout their lives, possibly, you know, like that subconscious, unconscious, you know, like, hey, I thought we had like something higher in life to do than just, you know, whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people struggle. They, they can't identify what it feels like. And I'm wondering, maybe you could help define a little what does it feel like to be on this the path of creation um for me and i don't know if this could be for everybody but that's why i usually would uh, give as an advice to find what you're here to do or what you like to do is to go back to what you like to do as a child mm -hmm. when uh, mm -hmm. really go back to what were you doing that nobody asked you to do that mm -hmm. you were enjoying yes. if you can remember that then it's already, um, it, it might not be what you want to do now, but it can lead you maybe to something else. It, it doesn't have to be exactly what you were doing, but uh, for me, if I remember what I was enjoying doing and that nobody asked me to do, it was not an influence from my family or school. I know it was dance and drawing. Yeah, yes. That's really what, what I wanted people to leave me alone, let me do this, or I would be happy to share that with friends, but that's what I like to do. And I'm sure people can go back to, to, to find something. It might not be childhood, maybe as a teenager, I don't know, but there was a time that you did something that nobody asked you to do and you really loved it. Or if you don't find this, I will say, try to do something different that you've never done before. I don't know, take a jewelry workshop. It's just a class. It doesn't mean that's going to be what you will do your whole life. Or try a, I don't know, a writing class. Or even if you don't want to be with people, try it alone at home. Try to write or sing or uh, build something. Do something, try something with your hands or try something with your body, it would be your voice or movement or or your mind, you can create so much. <laughs> you create with the mind. So it can be a story, it can be try something very different. Or uh, and when you do it, don't put pressure on you. Don't think like, oh, if this doesn't work, then what? Think that there will be another thing you can try. And and when you try it, it's not an end result. It doesn't have to be um like after this. I will decide if I want to do this as a job or not. It doesn't have to be a job first. First, it has to be something you enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. Later, because the job is money related, it's not related to you. Yes. <laughs> Personally, if you like to help people, if you like to help animals, or, or the other day I was talking with someone, I said, what do you want to do? What do you want to see when you wake up? Do you want to think, oh, today I'm going to feed animals? That's amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to see them every day. You know, like I want to wake up every day and help animals. They, I don't like people maybe, but I love animals. And, <laughs> so then that's the first route, it's the first step to, to your path. And you know, if think what you want to see when you wake up or what you would like to do. And, and then maybe then try to go in a sanctuary or an animal, uh, farm, you know, and, and ask if they need help, then, then you will, you will do the, the other steps naturally, step by step. It's just step by step. Don't yeah. pressure yourself that, oh, it's, it will be overwhelming, you know? How do you, how do you, um, advise people to deal with the whole money thing? Cause that, that really comes up for most people, that fear yeah. of scarcity, um, the automatic thoughts that, well, I can't do that. That's not gonna, I don't, you know, I don't have time for that. It doesn't make me any money. There's no value in that, you know. Yeah, that's a tough topic because we all in this situation where we need money mm -hmm. and we also, I mean, best is we don't want to, to end up doing something we don't like mm -hmm. for that reason, because then you, it's the opposite mm -hmm. of your purpose. You're mm -hmm. doing something you don't like and you're doing something for money. Yeah. So you will never feel full uh, and, and happy and you will feel like you're walking next to your 
your path, you know, it's frustrating, it's sad. I will say like, for example, for me, uh, I started with a job that was not art related. I was teaching French. That was the first job I found after my studies in the place I am living. So again, for me, I see art as a uh, language as, a, as an art. So it, I enjoyed it. But I knew it was not what I really wanted to do. So at the same time, I started to teach some dance classes slowly and I was performing once in a while I was just doing my purpose I will say or not fully because I was just performing for someone else it's not my art you know but going there slowly and if you need to keep a job to do your purpose if the best is you can if you can do a job that you like and at, at the on the side, do the things that you love and keep that balance if possible. So for me, it was possible. Um, and I'm sure there's a way we can find a way <laughs> because I was not making a, a lot of money teaching French, uh, but it was just enough. I don't need too much. You know, it's also about if you want to do what you want to do and it takes uh, you need to 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 have a part-time job for example so you can pay everything you have to pay and at the same time do what to do then you have to be able to see that this is enough for you i don't want too much it depends what people want sometimes people want a big tv and a, and they want to pay so many things that you will need to have a job that takes probably most of your time then you won't have time to if, if that's what you want the material things and you need to pay this then you might not have time to to do something on the side and again it depends what you do some people do very less like they do less effort they do very little effort and money just come to them uh, they find a way it's about finding Finding a way, I would say, but I know it's not easy because even for me, I'm in, the, I'm in this situation, but I just don't, how can I say? I know if I want to keep this art with me, I'm not going to ask for a big job that will take all my time and then I will lose my time for art. So it's to find this compromise, this balance in what you do and as long as you have enough uh, to eat and a shelter and do you really need what you say you need? You yeah, know? good questions. And it's like a commitment to yourself too. And to yeah. this thing that it's like you're committed to because it's so important. It, be, it mm. takes, I'm, you know, and it takes on an importance. Yes. Right. And it takes also some sacrifice. Yeah. So I might not be able to, to pay everything I, that I want or to, to travel home whenever I want. But that's also my sacrifice, you know, and, and then you never know in life how things can, you know, sometimes when you don't really focus on money and put that worry, then something comes to you and you're surprised and you thought, and you think, wow, I never thought this could happen. <laughs> you know, this is helping this is a huge help and you get some support from people that just enjoy, uh, not enjoy, but see also the importance in your work. And you never know where this source of income, I would say, or like this money will come from because we're always stuck in the, in the um, work, get paid, work, get paid, or have a government pay this for you. Or, but there's mm -hmm. other ways that can happen. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a certain faith or like um, trust, I think, in mm -hmm. how the universe will respond to you when you step into doing the right thing or the thing that's your call to do. Yeah. And yeah. I always say money is not a, a reward. Like, you know, money is not the price in this universe. So even if I don't get money, and or I have very little to survive, but then I can do 
what's important to do. Money is not the reward. Money will never uh, um, define or uh, the the quality of my work or of of our art or you know it's not it's not defined by money. <laughs> of yeah. course, we need it, and and but there, like I said, there's a way. Sometimes we'll have to do this a bit work here. Like sometimes I have to take some performances that I'm not really like. Like I say, I will refuse really work that I don't want that I don't align with. But when I do a dance job, it's a dance job that will help me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, even if mm -hmm. like well now actually when I if some like if agent ask me to perform, I will be very uh, selective on mm -hmm. the style. And the problem I had before is I ended up doing style, uh, like performances mm -hmm. of styles that I know very well, that I was teaching, but I've been, to I've been told to do a choreography from a YouTube video that, that was taught to me through someone who watched the video, but is not a dancer of this style. So that was modified. So then I ended up being told to do a dance on stage that looks uh, um, like um, like I have the French word like deformé, you know, like deformed or distorted. Like <laughs> distorted, yes, thank you. So then, when I ended up here, I was like, oh, never again. So now I will be very specific when mm -hmm. when they ask me to perform. And I I've had some performances, but not many. Not many, so there's always like for me. I try to to share also my products, my handmade products, to have this financial support. Uh, first, actually, I I share them with people who would want to support my dance because it's all online. Is there's no, uh, I mean, I don't do it again for money. But I was thinking, if I could just do this, maybe I could offer something for people to to make like a donation and receive my handmade products. Mm -hmm. That was my first idea. Uh -huh. like maybe this could support my dance. So then I thought, mm -hmm. okay, I will, I will uh, work on, on making these products better for people, not just the ones I use for myself, but make it like a product they could buy. And so I'm trying, I try to find ways around, you know, to, to, to get the income that, like basic income that we need. Mm -hmm. But again, for me, when I started to focus too much on the products, I realized I need to find balance in I'm like getting here, here, and the dance is going down. And, mm -hmm. and I, I don't feel like that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm not supposed to just make soaps, you know? It's, mm -hmm. uh, and also I see the results. They're not really, mm -hmm. uh, like when I was doing uh, not so much work to promote it i had a certain result and when i i told myself okay i'm going to to push it more uh, i mean not push it more but work on it more to to make it well and see how it goes if i put this amount of time on it i didn't see like huge results like almost the same so i'm thinking well if it's going to be like this, I'd rather just work on my art and my dance and still do it on the side. But I cannot just uh, put all my efforts into something I like to do, but it's not yeah. my purpose. <laughs> yeah, I love how you're so true to yourself, really, and, and, and yeah. giving to something bigger than yourself at the same time. It's like these two threads that you're weaving together and um, I feel like, you know, we'd have a better world if, you know, more people were able to, to, to commit to this path of like follow, finding, discovering their purpose and following it. And what, what do you, yeah. what's, what's your vision of like, what do you think could be better in the world if, you know, a whole bunch of people kind of did that? Uh, I think if people were true to themselves and, not letting the outside voices affect them in terms of knowing who you are, knowing what you're here to do, and people will be happier. And, and because when you focus on your inner voice and you start to 
you're not busy looking at what this one is doing and what they should do and and you know you see that in different situations because even in religion people will say something but then they're just busy looking at what the neighbor is doing when you should focus on your relationship with god not their relationship with god you know so there's so much contradiction and people are not happy in the end because there's no freedom in that yeah. and when people will understand uh, freedom and they will allow freedom to exist you know not try to control they will just control themselves not try to control other people then that would be wonderful that would be a place where people are happy and people will be free to find their own their own voice their own purpose yeah. it, it will start with freedom but people need to understand freedom and how they're how they are they are destroying freedom by trying to control uh other people and and not control themselves yeah yeah we're talking good. about being uh, misaligned to natural law and stuff transgressions and shit. And uh, yeah, going back to what you mentioned in the very beginning, as far as, you know, all these layers and stuff and things we have to unravel. And yeah, that harkens back to several shows we've had, uh, especially Loomis from Chana Down Radio out in Hawaii. But um, yeah, as far as, you know, like peeling back these layers and stuff, we can see the layers as, you know, all these, yeah, religion, whatever, false belief systems, media, and all these other things that are like these extra voices that get into our head in a sense that kind of, yeah, can blur out and, or, you know, and divide us <laughs> all yeah. the time. So yeah, it kind of gets, you know, flooded out or whatever, drown the, our inner voice is drowned out by all these other ones in a sense. So to kind of like you know, get them all out of here kind of thing, or just, you know, yeah, you know what I mean? And the thing is we need to like, what I, I would love people to remember is that they have this inner voice they just have to find it but they have the power to change the situation mm -hmm. to first change their situation if you're in a job you don't like or if you if you've always been doing uh something that is far from what you like to do as a child or or you can feel you're not doing what you're supposed to do you have the power to see these distractions, see these obstacles with your own eyes first. And you have to actually realize this yourself because I can put this in front of you, but if you don't want to see it, then your situation will never change. So first you have to see it, to remember that you have this power, this willpower to take, to act, to, to change the situation and yeah, to create uh, to be who you're here to be and to create what you want to create without causing harm. But you have this inside of you. You have the tool already to take action. That's that real self-worth. And yeah, I love it. And yeah, to really go, go over what you're talking about as far as like synthesizing, what I see is just, yeah, we do have to find this balance in life and what I've been trying to do in what relates to what you're doing as well is like yeah like aligning my you know financial income towards all my passions and, and things uh in alignment to the great work if you will and and just staying true to myself and not being subjected to whatever kind of oppressive systems yeah. and all all that mm -hmm. and so you know whatever we all can get caught up in or have been sometimes and i wouldn't say all oh, it's hard to generalize anyways so yeah. you know for a lot of the majority of people out there we have to you know have a job to pay the bills and on all that stuff and having that compromise to do the part-time or whatever to maintain and stay afloat financially uh regardless what i noticed with a lot of people is that you know with these jobs the nine to five rat race whatever or shorter longer whatever it takes away not just people's time, but also energy. You know, people yeah. come in drained at the end of the day. They don't have the, even if they have the time, they don't have the energy a lot of times to, you know, do what they've really loved to do, unfortunately. So for people to find, you know, ways to, you know, kind of taper off the energy 
exertion towards, you know, their financial job and save it for the after or before even, you know, people can find ways to kind of, you know, circumvent this, you know, way of life that's kind of controlling them in a sense, right? Yeah. Yeah, I remember when I was teaching, uh, I was like paid a part-time job, but the hours were spread out where I was working full-time and I was going all around the city. So the transportations were like uh, taking me so much energy and I was drained, like doing part-time, but feeling like a full-time. And this is when I also realized I have to to keep doing my dance because I was very tired. I was still taking dance classes as a you know, hobby or on the side, but I thought I have to change something. And it didn't happen in a moment, you know, like super fast. I had to still keep that job until I got more dance opportunities, started to have more than dance jobs, uh, like the performance work as well as teaching, but I tried to build my, my exit door while I was working in that job that was taking a lot of energy and not paid full time, but working like full time. Like I would be in a school from nine to three, but I would have only three classes. So three hours, I was paid three hours from nine to three, but I'm stuck at the school. And then I will have another class from six to eight, so I will have a day outside, like teaching from nine to eight, but only five hours. And then I will have to pay my own transportation. I was very tired with all the transportation. It was really making me exhausted. And at the same time, I started to organize events, dance events. That was taking me oh, a lot of energy. I was not making money from it. I actually was losing money from this. And there were some year I couldn't go home because I put all my money in the dance events, but that was my choice. And, and then I, I had to look at what I was doing and change something again. So it's always look at what you're doing, what you can do around it, what you can do with it. If you want to exit that job, what can you do on the side to, you know, it doesn't have to be every day. You could have just, like I had a dance class on a Saturday. So I could rest Friday night after a whole week working. And then the Saturday, I will keep it for my dance class. And I was so happy that day. I was looking for Saturday. I was so excited because when, you, when it's something you like to do, you don't think um, if you have time or energy to, to, to create that class, for example. I was so inspired while listening, while listening to a song. I was, oh, I'm going to teach them this choreography. So I was going to, I was finding back like my, dance archives what did i learn uh, that year oh, yeah this choreo and i was so excited so i would put the energy but i understand every day after work i wouldn't have that same energy i would be very tired from the job so it's just to if you can build slowly then it will grow you will see it will grow you will have more things happening around it and then the other thing is going to become smaller until you can stop it uh, but it takes like time <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah no, you, you did a really good job of, of really painting that picture you know and um i think that it does require like you said that determination to keep finding a way yeah. And to do that self-reflection, to be honest with yourself, right, you know, about the situation, the energy drain, and then to take action, you know, to change it. And I think that, you know, one thing that people could really work, you know, that will benefit people is to be more comfortable with some change. You know, making changes is what I'm hearing. It does take like a flexibility and a willingness to to make, to do things differently and try new things. And um, I know a lot of people are are very reluctant and scared around change. So if that's, yeah, I, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I, I want to say that uh, when you make changes, you need to understand that you can be in, in not you you're not controlling the. It's not like you control things, but 
you are the one making the change, you know? So you can make it go maybe this way, then things will happen. You cannot control everything, but you, you're navigating your boat, you know? So you might have a storm. Like my, my father actually, that's something I, I, I love to do with him is he had a sailing boat when I was little. And he, then he stopped when I was at my last year of elementary school. So maybe around until 11 years old, we were always on the boat. And I've learned so many things that I can use in life, like facing a storm. You know, the sea was very calm a few minutes ago and then you have like everybody doing so many things and like the boat being uh, you're like it's going to sink I mean when you're a child you're like oh what can happen you know but it's that you have to understand that you are the sailor of your boat you cannot control what the universe really you know will bring to you like the storms or the calm weather or, or whatever or some technical problems on the boat, but you navigating so you can you can take it to some directions that you want to go to, knowing that there will always be something unknown or something you cannot control. But you here you have a uh, you have the power of your, you have the control of your own actions. Then the results you cannot control, but you are here navigating your boat. And Boom. it's not uh, someone else English, doing uh, Sorry. Uh, in English, we say uh, being the captain of your ship. Yes. I, yeah. And That's I, just, it, right? I had a funny smirk earlier because, uh, you know, like, you don't want to be caught being the drunken sailor on your own ship. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But yeah. Yeah, it's a good yeah. one. Exactly. And, you know, and sometimes things don't work out exactly. So, you know, it's also like accepting that you might learn things through some failures, perhaps, or things that don't go the way you want, but that, you know, always sort of like making adjustments, I guess, you know. Yes. Making adjustments, yes, yeah, and yeah. not being afraid of the adjustments because you, mm -hmm. you, you making them. You, you know, it's not everything comes to you from outside. Is you also putting something out, outside of you there, and why being afraid of this? You know, change also comes from you. You, you participating in that change, so you yeah. can just trust it. Uh, you know, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. So I'm thinking we're about to the wind down point. So any um, questions that you have, Derek, and any and then for you, Dorian, to think about any oh, points yeah. that you want to make that we haven't made yet. Okay. Um, as our good friend likes to say, <laughs> Brandon Spencer, you got that natural love. <laughs> 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 I like this one. <laughs> I know you do, and I know you got it. But uh, yeah, like, how do you maintain uh, alignment, if you will, and navigating uh, the path and stuff? And yeah, Seth Exposed has a great uh, video titled "Like Navigating Consciousness" with a really cool image of a boat sailing the tumultuous seas of reality. Because yeah, things are mm -hmm. pretty fucked up in a lot of ways, and all that stuff, and people will get pulled into the programming and like, you know, like, you know, like we're lost in a sea of, of you know, the collective unconsciousness sometimes, mm -hmm. as I like to call it. So yeah, how do you stay aligned to the divine in these troubling times? Yeah, so question. I like that, that you point out the being lost at sea. So if you are navigating uh, a boat or you a ship, you have to understand how the sea works and how your boat if you have a sailing boat with one uh, uh mat you know how is it called the uh, le mat i forgot in english sorry uh, a sail. But uh, the you mat. have boats that have two some that i have one it's you sail it differently you need to understand the language of the sea if you don't know all these rules i will say you will be lost at sea and never found again, you know, uh, because my father was teaching 
how to sail also to friends. And you need that knowledge to sail. So to navigate in your life, you need also knowledge. So that's what I will use to navigate through life is with, with certain knowledge. And when I really realized that the knowledge that I needed was that one is when I found the knowledge of natural law. And it made things easy, really. Because, I mean, it, it made life easier to navigate. It doesn't mean things are not as hard uh, or like it might be harder than before sometimes. Or, I mean, there will be difficulties. But with knowing just the difference of right and wrong, that you shouldn't harm another being, when you make your decisions, it's very simple. You don't have to think too much. You don't have to start to go, yeah, but what about this and that? And this one say this and this one th say that. It's very simple. It's, is this right or wrong to do? Does it harm another being? Then if it does, then I don't do it. That's, it became my, my foundation to make decisions and to see through life. Because then if, oh, I'm asked to do this or that, maybe before if it would feel wrong and I would not know why. But now I know that it's wrong. It's not I just feel something is off. Or I know. And I know how to navigate because I know the rule, the universal rule of, of, this, um, of this natural moral law of objective morality. And I know what I'm supposed to do and I know what I'm not supposed to do. And that it's not for me to choose it. And then I know how to navigate. And again, it won't be easy or, or just easy or just hard. Or it will be always up and down. And I just have to be, like you said, on the rhythm. But only with knowing that knowledge, only with knowing this, this tool, I can navigate with it. If I don't know how to use it, if it's a compass, I don't know how to use it, I will never get... Uh, through the sea, you know, through the storm. Uh, so for me, it's really to understand this natural law and this knowledge around it. And that makes me able to understand how to navigate. And that's why also I try to share this message with people, this tool, I will say this key, or so they can also navigate. Because you see people lost at sea. Because they don't have this knowledge. And you try to give it to them, but say, no, I don't believe in this. Or no, it's, well, it's just a tool. In, it's a knowledge for you to, to actually do what, you, what you're supposed to do, you know, and, and do the right thing. So it's not something that I've created or, or that I think is good. Or, it's really a tool. It's, you wouldn't uh, have this kind of, rejection if you were at sea in a storm and you are a visitor on the ship but you have a captain and the captain knows how it works he learned he got the knowledge of the sea you know of navigation he knows how the compass work how the how to navigate how how to go through a storm and you wouldn't be like no i don't believe you i you know in in that kind of situation you will trust the captain. But here you can be the captain too. Actually, we are all here to be captains. It's a, it's a ship or it's a sailing boat that is, is our body, you know. And each sailing boat needs one captain. And so your body can only have one captain. And it's you. It cannot be outside. It cannot be government. It cannot be your neighbor. It cannot be... Uh, I don't know, a religious figure or, or your parents. It's, you are the captain right. of your own sailing boat or ship. I don't know vessel, what you want to navigate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, your vessel. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I think it's very simple, actually. And I, I hope people could see the simplicity of it and, and then use that knowledge to to experience freedom. Oh, Leslie is frozen. <laughs> the trivium, yeah. Oh, she is? Yes. Ah, oh, crap. 
Yeah, the oh, trivium. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh yeah, that was the last year conference. But, yeah. yeah, just real quick, because uh, I got to give you much love and respect, Dorian. We've almost done ten videos together, and we did three mm. little. Uh, you did the voice of uh, some of the um, little in the live stream, little promo ads, whatever. And that was great. And uh, working with Mario West and all that. Yes. Yeah, that was really awesome. So, uh, yeah. yeah. And also, the, I want to add the tools that, for example, Maya West is uh, sharing in her book, in her work, in her videos, the, the, the tools to heal yourself, to to go through to all the traumas you had, that's another tool that you need to get to navigate through life. Yeah, so that's also very important work, the shadow work, the self work to yeah, remove those la layers, you know, that that blur your... Uh, yeah, Mario yeah. West, one of the best, yeah. that's right. Yeah, <laughs> it rhymes. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Leslie, glad you came back. So I know soon. I just like went frozen. And I know we're off. almost about to leave, but you know you have to. Do I it fell it off the suddenly, edge of the <laughs> ocean, <laughs> the edge of the sea. <laughs> it was like like the Kraken, you know, or in the Pirates of the Caribbean, the big hole. All of a sudden, you go to another world. That's where I went. <laughs> yeah. What well, is Monday or Moon a day? And it's well, about Sunday about where I'm at. Full in scorpio or something like that oh so, yeah. that's my, my okay. sign yeah <laughs> oh, it's my ascendant yeah oh wow cool. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. all right well i'm getting a little sleepy <laughs> no way. well thank you so much for uh, yeah. for having this discussion with me i also appreciate both of your work mm, um thank you. and thank you for doing that as well and yeah. giving tools for people to to navigate and be free. <laughs> yeah, same to you, Dorian. Oh, yeah. I really, really appreciate meeting you and love um, this, just the straightforward, real, authentic, um, like pathway that you've been able to kind of, you know, define for us today around being like real, or, you know, a real yeah. human. Yeah. And I just want to say that I'm not from um, like, I've always uh, had to study with scholarships. Like my parents didn't have um, the finances to cover things like that. Or even like I say, my father has a sailing boat, but people don't know how he got it, how he put all his money into this or, you know, by a, like a, mm -hmm. not a new thing, but you find, you can find a way. You see, it's also, even when you don't really have so much, you can have something if you really want it. And I was able to, travel all the way to Taiwan because I had scholarships and so it don't li uh, limit yourself because of money like I, I need it like people but it's just that I accept that I don't need more uh, I don't need a lot that's what I mean it, and don't let it control your life because if you see this is something that's like moving always moving as well um, it's a currency, it's something, it's a tool you can use, but it's not something that should be first. It's something you can get and put something you like first and it will come as well, you know? And yeah. even if you have to find a job, like I was teaching French, it's still something that I enjoy doing, you know? Like, the, don't get really uh, completely outside of yourself and your yeah. your heart yeah. might not be best right now like what you really want to do but do something you you like mm -hmm. and yeah yeah perfect it's the connection is a yeah we're getting weird connections <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, no worries, no worries. <laughs> yeah that's a really sweet note to end it on doran thank you so much uh yeah Thank you. Your enthusiasm it's a bit. Uh, sorry, the connection is a bit off, but no, no. thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, we had real quality um, video there. Thank you so much. It's a wonderful conversation. Yeah, I'm really happy with it.
Me too. Yeah. Thank you for yeah, having me. We'll get all your again. contact information down below. Obviously, there's a QR code if people want to snap that up. And uh, wow, that leads thanks. to her website. You have a YouTube yeah. channel, Instagram, and all that. And I got trains. Le yeah. train qui arrive à la Ciota. Attention. Uh, oh, the train. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Magnifique. Thank uh, merci you. beaucoup à tout le monde. Dorian merci. Yeah. Yeah, Thank merci. you to both of you. Yeah. Merci. Thank you. Thank you. Till next Take time. Yes. yes. Goodbye. Thanks everyone for listening. It's been wonderful Thank meeting you, you Doreen. Yeah. Bye bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao.